football and two fine teams are at each other's throats again today. The St. Louis Cardinals who won yesterday, one to nothing, and the Chicago Cubs who are trying to even up the series. The Cubs still lead the Eastern Division by two games. Stay with us now for every thrilling play coming up in a moment. Baseball is brought to you in part by Bud Light, the one light that outshines them all. Everything else is just a light. Your Chicagoland Northwest Indiana Better Buick dealers. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. True Value Hardware. For quality selection and personal attention, make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. The Chicago Tribune, where you'll always get the freshest sport. Unical 76, to invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. Pepsi, a generation ahead. Canon, proud to be the official camera of the Chicago Cubs. United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly sky. And Nissan, building cars for people who want more than just a means of getting from here to there. Nissan. Built for the human race. 1,000 plus as the Chicago Cubs try to even up the series with the St. Louis Cardinal. The uh, Cubs have had good success. They swept the two-game series here earlier. Then they won two out of three in St. Louis last weekend. They dropped the game yesterday, one to nothing, and they have Greg Maddox to even up the series today. A series which will continue with a single game tomorrow and a single game Monday afternoon. The lineups for today's game. Coleman in left, Thompson in center, Smith at short, Guerrero at first, Pendleton at third, Brunanski in right, Okendo at second, Pena the catcher, and Joe McGrain, who's won three and lost five, do the pitching for the Cardinals. For the Cubs, Webster in left, Law at third, Sandberg at second, back in the lineup today, McLendon at first, Jackson in right, Ramos at short, Rona the catcher, Desenzo in center field, and Greg Maddox, who's won five and lost five. On the hill, Steve Ripley's a plate umpire, Bruce Fremming at first, Terry Tata at second, and Jerry Lane at third. Ah, uh, a lot of people do in this audience here today love the Cubs. And there are, too, a few Cardinal fans to be distinguished by their red jackets and sweaters. Greg Maddox is going to try to quiet the Cardinal fans today as he makes his 13th start of the year and his second against the Cardinals. Last time out against New York, Greg was on the mound for five innings, gave up four hits and two earned runs, and the Cubs won that one 15-3. This year Greg has pitched against the Cardinals one time he got a no decision in one start back at Wrigley Field on April 11th. During the course of his very young career he is two and five with a 351 ERA against St. Louis in nine games. Maddox working on a four game winning streak trying to make it five in a row and to do that effectively he'll have to do what Scott Sanderson did yesterday to the Cardinals and that was completely shut down Vince Coleman and four at bats. That's uh, zooming in from the high scoreboard camera. And boy, what a beautiful sight it is. The sailboats are out on Lake Michigan, Arnie. We're ready to play ball. Vince Coleman will lead it off for the St. Louis Cardinals. Have to watch the bunt today for Coleman because anytime he gets in a streak when he's not hitting the baseball, and after 0 for 4 yesterday, he might be looking to lay one down. First pitch. A high 
high foul ball out of play into the stands in left field. Hank and Marie Keppel from St. Charles, Missouri are watching the ball game. If you keep that fastball high and away to Coleman and you can stay there, you'll get that little pop up to the left side or that harmless fly ball to left field. Barry gonna bunt the pitch almost hit him. And I'm amazed at more hitters of the of the type that uh, Vince Coleman is. Guys who are fast, beat a lot of hits out, don't practice and attempt to bunt maybe at least once a day. They brought down a special instructor in spring training, a man by the name of Bunny Mick, to work with Coleman, but he hasn't tried to butt all that often. He just doesn't feel comfortable doing it. He fouls the pitch off one and two. How about that for a beautiful, beautiful shot of Lake Michigan and the many sailboats that are on it right now. This is a great city, folks. One ball, two strikes. Bouncing ball, Ramos has it. Throws a first in time for the out. Uh, Ramos went nicely to his left and threw out Coleman. And boy, you got to be thinking how fast he is as you approach the ball, as Ramos does right here. Ramos has played well defensively, and he knows he's got to get rid of the ball quickly. So you can't play quite as deep with Coleman going down the line. And Ramos, about halfway, makes this play with room to spare. That's one out, brings up Mill Thompson. You know, Sanderson, who pitched a heck of a ball game, had the first two men easily out yesterday when Ozzy Smith doubled and scored a moment later on. Pedro Guerrero's double, and that's all there was. Mill Thompson. And the count is evened up. That was a good off speed breaking ball by Maddox, and he's got to establish that pitch early to keep the hitters honest. There's a pit foul into the stand. They're scrambling for the souvenir. And you saw what that off speed breaking ball did to Thompson. He fooled him with the speed of it, then he zipped the fastball in, and Thompson was way late on the swing. Sack him out! Thompson is called out on strike. Two out. And here is Ozzie Smith. Ozzie doubled a left with two out yesterday. Then Guerrero doubled a right center. And that was a ball game, but little did we dream that to be true at that point. Curve strike and Leno a little bit outside, ball one. They're here from Kokomo, Indiana today. A busload of Cub fans from Danville, sponsored by WDAN, which is a broadcast affiliate of the Chicago Cubs Network. Strike call. Two balls and a strike, two on. Strike call, two and two. Crowd's still coming in, a lot of empty seats. Those are seats that have been sold, so people just haven't gotten here yet. Two balls, two strikes. Ozzy a better hitter from the right side. He's got more pop from the right side, although his only home run has come this year hitting left handed. He only has two left handed home runs in the course of his career. He lined it foul into the stand down the third base line. Jill Yakel and Dennis Babbitt are here from Belleville, Illinois. Two balls, two strikes. Bouncing ball. That's easy. Sandberg throws him out. One, two, three. We go to the bottom of the first. No score. There you see, looking down the streets at Wrigley Field, the crowd. It's going to be another sellout. The uh, Cubs and the Mets drew 140,000 plus in the their four game series 
And the Cubs and the Cardinals, they have four games, one tomorrow, one Monday. They'll probably go at least 140,000. Then you look at the defense and how they line up behind Joe McGrain. Here's a pitch foul back, strike two. Don Zimmer has made a change in his lineup today. Doug Desenzo has dropped into the eighth spot, and Mitch Webster elevated to the first spot. 0 oh and 2 the count. Webster tried to bunt his way on. 0 oh and 2. A little bit low, ball one. The Cubs saw Joe McGrain in St. Louis. He went six and a third, giving up six hits and three earned runs, and the Cubs beat him five to two. One ball, two strikes. He struck him out. Webster goes down swinging, and the Cardinal fans are heard to cheer. Josh Mora, our AD up in the booth, pass along this bulletin. Wichita State won the College World Series. They defeated Texas and Omaha today, five to three. That's a surprise. One out. There you look at how the Cubs have done against left-handed starters. They're tied for the best in baseball with the Oakland A's at 15 and four when a southpaw starts the game against them. The pitch a little bit low. 59 degrees, so it's a little bit cool. The wind 17 miles an hour out of the east. Blowing in. There's a strike call. Law five out of 18 against the pitching of the Cardinals this year. There's a Hall of Famer who is going to be inducted with Harry Carey. That's Red Shane Deans. That's a funny story, too. Here's the pitch he fouled it off. You know, Red and I, Red played his first major league game the day I broadcast my first major league game in St. Louis. And now we're both going to Cooperstown together. That's an incident. And you know, I think one of the umpires that day, that first day, Al was Al Barlick, and he's going in too. Along with Johnny Bench and Carl Yastrzemski, the great stars. A few well-deserved appointments this year. Thank you. Strong, and he missed. Striking him out. Boy, oh boy. All of a sudden, we can't hit these Cardinal pitchers. You know, Jose De Leon struck out 10 yesterday, including six the first three innings. You know, Harry, what's interesting, everybody thinks the Red is a great ball player and a wonderful second baseman, which he was. But he also won over a thousand games, 1,028, as a matter of fact, as a manager yeah. for the Cardinals. And he's the only man that leads Whitey Herzog in Cardinal victories from a managerial standpoint. <laughs> Two out. Here's Sandberg. Curveball a little bit inside. Wichita State, the new college baseball champion. They beat Texas today. There's a strike call. Joe McGrain out of Des Moines, Iowa. Big good looking left hander. <laughs> Fouled it off. You know, Harry, two. Red tells a good story about the day that you pitched some cork ball to both Red and Stan Musial. You <laughs> said you could get him out. You knew the secret, it was easy. And they had a net apparently in back of the tavern that had the cork ball. He said he took you over the net, and then Musial took you over the net, and that was it for your pitching career. I thought, sure, I could fool them throwing <laughs> the cork ball. He struck him out, and he struck out the side. McGrain, and at the end of one, there is no score. I wonder if it's as cool on the bleachers as it is here. It must not be from the attire of some of the lovelies out there. Here we go, top of the second. And here's Guerrero. Boy, what a tough hitter this guy is. 42 ribbies, six home runs, hitting 312. He hits the ball everywhere. There's a pitch a little bit low. One ball, no strikes. 
Pedro Gribbs that big bat right down at the end and he has got very fast hands but Maddox has got enough steam to get inside on him. Swings and he fouls it out of play. Zachary Victor celebrating his 13th birthday here today. One ball one strike. Ground ball. Whoa. Too late, safe, an air on law. Well, I slate on Vance Law, and you don't want to start off an inning against the Cardinals like this. So Vance is charged with an air, and that is air number five for him this year, and Guerrero's aboard. A routine chance, he just simply fumbled it. Scott and Lori Hasselbring from Anchor, Illinois, are here, and a group from the Quad Cities, headed by Charlie Buckley. Maybe that's where some of these empty seats, maybe those people haven't gotten here. They're flying in here. Ground ball, the line, what happened? A balk. A balk, but a balk is called. Harry, that's just a thoughtless play by Maddox because Guerrero can't run anymore. That's the first balk of the year for Maddox, who did that a few times last year. When you've got a non-runner at first base, the last thing you want to do is not hesitate. Don Zimmer is irate because that was a double play ground ball, and they would have turned it over 5-4-3 easily. Instead, a man in scoring position and nobody out. Watch, Watch it. it. Watch it again. The ground ball was sharply hit right at long. He tried, he was going to bunt. Had to skip the rope to get out of the way, and Berryhill goes out to talk to Maddox, trying to settle him down. Guerrero got on in an air. He would have been retired in a double play, but a balk was called. So it's a good idea for Berryhill to try to settle him down. Or rather, Rona. Rona not catching today, not Barry Hill. He swings and he misses. One ball, one strike. Maddox only went five innings last time against the Mets, and if you remember that game, Daryl Strawberry lined one off his calf, but he's showing no ill effects of that today. Rick Rona behind the plate. Boy, he won that game Monday night, you know. A Thursday against the Mets. One ball, one strike. We're in the second. No score, but the Cardinals threaten. Terry Pendleton at the plate. Outside, ball two. Two balls and the strike. Guerrero. Talking with Ramos, the shortstop. Pendleton, it's 30 points higher from the left side. All three of his home runs have come as a left hand hitter. Pick off way save. Boy, oh, he almost threw the ball in the center field. Ramos made the catch as he reached. To his right. Pedro almost gets picked off. He decides to take a quick break for third. Maddox fires. And it's a very close play at second. Good play, good athletic effort by Ramos. It was going away from the play, and he makes the catch anyway. There's a ground ball. Will the dance a man to third? The throw. Maddox is over there to take it from McClendon. And so the Cardinals have a runner at third with only one out. And here's Tom Bernanski. Bernanski has been in somewhat of a slump, and that's the reason why Whitey Herzog today has elevated Pendleton up behind Guerrero. He wanted a left handed bat behind Pedro, so he split up Guerrero and Bernanski. Bernanski dropped into the sixth spot. Infield now in at all four positions. A little bit low and outside. Greg Maddox. With Jose Okendo next. Bernanski double yesterday. 
hit a couple of balls hard. He's had one homer this season against the Cubs. Fouls a pitch back. One ball, one strike. Infield in. Outfield back. There's a foul ball. And he's ahead of them now. One ball, two strikes. You might not have heard a whole lot about Tom Brunanski over the past few years, but he is one of five players in the major leagues to have hit at least 20 home runs the last seven seasons. So he's a bona fide long ball threat. Guerrero down the line at third. Just barely missed two and two. If he can get that breaking ball over one more time, he can get Brunanski. Bruno's been pulling off the ball, trying to pull most everything. That's where the power come from, but when you do that, you can be victimized by the breaking ball away. Two balls, two strikes. Hey! Struck him out on a curveball. Brunanski chased the bad pitch. Two gone. Here's Oquendo. Watch the first move by Bernanski. He opens up, pulls out, and he couldn't reach that with a broomstick handle. Two men are out. The umpire room, umpiring room manager Jimmy Farrell wants to welcome Elaine Young and the wonderful nurses from St. Luke's Hospital of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, here today. There's a pitch a little low. Now Maddox has a chance of getting out of the inning. But he's got to get this little guy out. Jose Okendo. Two balls, no strikes. Rona said yesterday before the game that he has no problem with his rhythm defensively, even though he only plays once a week or so. And he showed you on the last two pitches, moving inside and outside, that he's got good mobility behind the plate. Two balls, no strikes. There's a high fly ball, should be caught. Out of the inning without a run. Oh, Kendo fly to Webster. They're going to bottom of the second. No score. London leading it off, hitting 365 with five homers. 15 RBIs. Ground ball right field, base hit. McLendon singles the right. Lloyd got a first ball fastball, and you don't want to wait around to hit the curveball from Joe McGrain. He just drove it into right field, and his batting average is up to 377. That brings up Darren Jackson, playing for the first time in a while. Penny Daly, our good friend, wishing a happy birthday to Terry Mernane. And Bernal Holtzman in New Brun Brunfeld, Texas. There's a drive in the center field, will be caught. Thompson there, and he has it. The wind blowing directly in from the east. Jackson fly deep to Mill Thompson. On another day that would have been in the center field seats because Darren Jackson got all of that ball but with the wind blowing in it's 17 miles an hour straight in over the scoreboard. If you don't hit a line drive it's going to be tough to get it out of the park. There's Domingo Ramos hitting 259. One homer nine RBI. Fastball is a little bit high. Father Ryan who works with. Father Smith and Maryville here with a group of the children. From Maryville, their chuck wagon, you know, is June the 25th at Maryville in this plane. Swung and he missed a high fastball. Boy, I tell you, fathers Smith and Ryan, what a job they do at Maryville. And the community really appreciates them, too. Remember the chuck wagon day, Sunday. June 25th. One ball, one strike. 
fouls him back had a good cut. The Cubs have not been running much because they haven't had much doing on the bases in this series. But Tony Pena does throw the ball particularly well. However, at times he gets rid of the ball slowly. And there's Andre Dawson. Jerome Walton will be activated tomorrow, and Dawson is not too far away. Now ready. Line draw, great stop by Okendo. And a double play. What a play by Okendo. Took a base hit away from Ramos and turned it into a double play. 4 6 3. At the end of two, no score. I send you for a Bud Light, and you bring back... Well, if you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. So, there are no men here, there's an unlimited supply of Bud Light, and we can never leave. Correct. Because everything else is just a light. We can live with that. Yeah. That's Harry Carey, back at the ballpark. Watch this major league play here. Jose Okendo probably plays second base as well as anybody but Ryan Sandberg and perhaps Bill Dorn. But Okendo's a shortstop by trade. Here he makes an outstanding play, turning it into a 4 6 3 double play and getting Joe McGrain out of the inning. And the Cardinals, one of the better defensive clubs, and there's an example of it. The pitch to Pena. Foul down the first baseline. Here's a young fella, Mike Sinkowski. Celebrating his eighth birthday today. All he wanted was for his parents to bring him to the ballpark as a birthday present. And that's what they did. They're from Pell Lake, Wisconsin. A young Cub fan, Mike Sinkowski, eight years old today. One ball, one strike. There's a shot of the Downtown's scene in Chicago. Pitch low and outside. Pat and Marie Faber from Kincaid, Illinois, are here. Not a cloud in the sky today. It's absolutely gorgeous in Chicago. Well, almost hit a ball three. Scott Mitchell celebrating his 15th birthday today. From Greendale, Wisconsin. Tony Pena airs it out on every swing, but you can see that he's not easy to fan. And looking fastball here, Tony will try to go right back through the middle. He walked in ball four. And the leading man gets on. That's the second inning in a row that the first man got on base. Here's Joe McGrain. Lennox would like to throw high fastballs to Joe McGrain and maybe he can get him to pop up this bunt. McGrain has two sacrifices this year. And now Lloyd McClendon coming in to talk with Maddox about when he's going to release it first. You don't want to be thrown out of first after the first baseman is charging on the bunt. That'll earn you a balk. McGrain has one out of 23 for the year, but he's hit a homer in the major leagues. The first game he ever pitched for the Cardinals, he homered. There's a good bunt to play. Whoa, they don't play the second. They throw the third. I think Maddox had a play at second, but his foot slipped. Rather than take a chance on throwing Wiley, he took the sure out. The call belongs to Rick Rona, who's got the play in front of him. And right now, Rona is telling Maddox where he thinks he should go. Maddox is very quick off the mound. And Harry, you're right. The back foot yeah. slipped. Maddox couldn't plant. He did have a shot at Pena, but now he takes the sure out at first. So they have a man in scoring position, and here's Vince Coleman. Bounced out his first time. Curve strike in there. The outfield plays Coleman shallow in left and center. It's a never ending battle for hitting instructor Johnny Lewis to get Vince Coleman to swing down on the ball. He hits way too many fly balls to left and left center field. If you're in a crouch and your first move is up, you're going to hit the ball in the air. He wants him to get on top of the ball and take advantage of his speed by hitting ground balls. He had a swing, 0 oh 2. Alicia Cox from West Chicago pulling for the Cubs.
One man out. A man in scoring position. 0-2 the count. On Vince Coleman. Come out of curveball. Coleman is called out on strike. That brings up Mill Thompson. This is a great breaking ball by Maddox. He starts it over the right handed batter's box, and it's a perfect pitch. Coleman gives up on it when he sees it away, and it comes right back. Sit down, Vince. The pitch to Thompson, a little bit outside. Well, we have a great Cub fan, Arnold Scowl, watching the ball game in San Bernardino, California. And a couple of Cub fans rehabilitating at Evanston Hospital, Dan Schwartz and Lou Wagman. One ball, no strikes. A little bit high, Ozzy Smith is next. Stan and Millie Winnick from Sun City, West Arizona, are here. Inside ball three. Thompson getting his chance to play because Willie McGee is on the bench once again, this time with a wrist problem. A lot of people around St. Louis figure that Willie McGee will be involved in a trade that will hopefully bring the Cardinals a pitcher that they desperately need in their starting rotation. There's a look at Willie who still got some good baseball left in him. Strike call. Frank Antonia Antos from Hedgewish. She's celebrating her 51st birthday. Three balls and the strike. You know Thompson will be swinging if the pitch is good. And there's a base hit, the first run of the ball game. A line single to center. And the Cardinals have broken on top. RBI number 18 for Thompson, who's hit very well against the Cubs. That shows you what happens in a fastball situation when a pitcher gets a fastball out over the plate. A 3 1 count, Milt Thompson guessing fastball. This ball is up, and Thompson drives it just over the outstretched arm of Domingo Ramos. Now here's Ozzy Smith. Oh, that Thompson hits a ton against the. Cubs he did when he was with the Phillies and he's doing it again with the Cardinal he's six out of 18 for the year against Cub pitching 333 batting average there's Rona throw in the center field here's the Senzo a stolen base for Thompson on Rick Rona's bad throw and they had a pitch out on too. He winds up at third base. So the Cubs guess right. It doesn't work out very well. The sixth stolen base of the year for Milt Thompson. And Rick Rona makes a terrible throw on the first base side of second. No chance for Ramos because the runner is coming that way. And Thompson on his way to third. One to nothing. A little inside ball to Ozzy Smith. A tough clutch hitter. He's driven in 19 runs. That evens a con. Two balls and the strike. Two men are out. A runner at third. A run home. One to nothing, Redbirds. Base hit. Left field. That bats in another run. Ozzy Smith pokes a single to left, scoring Thompson. Two to nothing, St. Louis. 
RBI number 20 for Ozzie Smith and as a rule the Cardinals are not going to let you get away with many defensive miscues. And they take advantage right here of a base on balls and an error in this inning and it's suddenly two to nothing Cardinals. Here's Guerrero now. Inside Smith a big lead at first base a good base stealer. Ten and two for Ozzie in the stolen base department this year. A runner back. Cardinals now creeping up on the Cubs in the base running department. They have swiped 57 bases. The Cubs 62. One ball, no strikes. Hot shot, but it Ramos has it over the second or the fourth side. Boy, that ball was hit. Two runs on two hits and an error. We go into the bottom of the third, two to nothing, St. Louis. The third, here's Rick Rona. We had an error in the top of the third. Rona, who won the final game of the series when the Mets with a, a squeeze play bunt. He taps one softly to the pitcher. Over to first in time. McGrain throws out Rona. Here's DeCenzo. McGrain, like so many of these players for St. Louis, has had some rib cage problems. He also suffers from colitis, which is a condition that he's never going to be able to get over, and it'll flare up from time to time. That will weaken you. It's an intestinal situation. But he's a big enough, strong enough man to overcome a lot of adversity. It's 6'6, 230 pounds. And he's going to be a real good pitcher. There's a strike call to DeCenzo, who's two out of 17 for the year against Cardinal pitching, batting 147. Strike two called, 0 and 2. Rachel Reed from. Car Carthage, Illinois, celebrating a birthday here. He struck him out on three pitches. Desenzo goes down swinging. Two out. And that'll bring up Greg Maddox, a good hitting pitcher. Greg loves to chop down on the ball and put it in play and try to let his speed take over. He, he makes a lot of contact for a pitcher. He's tied with Sutcliffe. Each having six hits. Maddox hitting 222. He leads the pitches in RBIs with three. One ball, one strike. Two men are out. The Cardinals look much better, it seems like, in this series than they did in St. Louis. There's a pitch outside. Tony Pena mentioned yesterday, Harry, that his team was starting to get hot. He said they're starting to play good, solid baseball. This is a good fundamental team who wasn't playing very well when the Cubs saw him in St. Louis. But they suddenly have everything all together. There's a pitch a little bit inside. Ball three. And Mitch Webster would be up there next. The wind blowing in from right field. Three and one the count. Ball four. He walked him. And that's the first walk that McGrain has given. And he gives it to Maddox. And here's Mitch Webster. There's a lady, Dorothy Gephardt, 84 years old. Is watching the game here. She's from West Lafayette, Indiana. The first time she's been to Rigby Field. Boy, she's lived a sheltered life. Swings and he fouls it back. My good friend John McDonough mentions today that there's a few notables in the ballpark. Irma Moody here from Astoria, Illinois. Phil Lane from Tucson. Chris McCombs from St. Louis, but he's a Cub fan, as is Bob Fisher and Dan Knight and Jay Doughty. Whoa! Almost.
almost hit him. And Maddox goes to second base. A wild pitch by McGrain. That's the sixth wild pitch of the year for Joe McGrain, and you're not going to get much wilder than this. If a catcher makes this play, it's a miracle. The sweeping breaking ball is behind Webster. Tony Pena can't possibly see the ball, and look at the look on Mitch Webster's face. Where's this <laughs> one going? Too bad he didn't have a wallet in his back hip pocket. He'd have been hit by the pitch ball. One ball, one strike. Swung and he misses. Webster fanned his first time. Rich and Amy Holiday from Edwardsville, Illinois, on their honeymoon here. One ball, two strikes. Two to nothing, St. Louis. Inside. Ball two. Two and two. The green has got a good fastball today. He's throwing much harder than we saw him in St. Louis. He's out of the University of Arizona, the fine program down there, headed by former Major League player Jerry Kindle. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three almost threw that one away. Three balls, two strikes, two out. St. Louis leading two to nothing. We're in the bottom of the third. Standing room only crowd. Ground ball to the first baseman. Guerrero has it. Steps on first to retire the side. Dwayne will be along in a minute. Harry Carey from Rigby Field. At the end of three, the Cardinals lead two to nothing. From Wrigley Field, this game moves into the fourth inning. With Steve Stone and our producer director Artie Harris, this is Dwayne Stats. Two nothing Cardinals out in front. Cardinals very opportunistic in their third. So far, Joe McGrain is throwing the ball every bit as well as Jose De Leon threw it yesterday. This is Pendleton leading off, and he fouls the first one out of play, strike one. And you know you're right, Dwayne. I think the Cardinals are at a point in their season where they're starting to take advantage of everything the opposition gives them. And if the Cubs are going to make a mistake or two, the Cardinals are going to take advantage of it. They did in the third, scoring both their runs. Pendleton, Rodansky, and Okendo do in this inning. Two strikes the count. Maddox throwing the ball well. He has three strikeouts and a walk through the first three. Giving up the two runs. One of the runs in the third was unearned as a result of the error charged to Rick Rona on the stolen base by Milt Thompson. The pitch down and in. So we go to a ball and two strikes. Pendleton starting the afternoon at 241. Maddox in here five and five on the year. He's won four straight. The Cubs trying to pull even in the current series after the Cardinals won yesterday's ball game one to nothing. Ground ball. This is foul outside of first. So the count is still one and two. We've been joined in the booth by Darlene Jackson and Michelle Grace. We have a special event coming up, don't we, ladies? Yes, we do. We have the Cubs Wives for Family Rescue Benefit. And it's a Moods of Monte Carlo evening. And all the players and the wives are going to be hosting tables. And it's a real good chance for the fans to come out and go one on one with the guys. There's going to be a photo booth, lots of prizes. And we do have Pat Sajak coming in from Hollywood, California. Um, he's the host of Wheel of Fortune and the Pat Sajak Show. Pendleton singles up the middle. That's DeCinzo making the pickup. So a leadoff single. And for the third straight inning, the Cardinals have the leadoff man aboard. That's going to bring up Tom Brunanski. And again, uh, numbers and dates, the telephone number especially. Okay, the date is Friday, June 23rd, and it starts from 6 and it goes on to 11 in the evening. 
And the number you would like to call is 375-1918. And I'd like a chance to tell you about all the prizes we're going to have. A fur from York Furriers. We're going to have a trip to two uh, for Paris. That's going to be the grand prize of the evening. And the women are going to be wearing jewelry from Feinstein's Jewelers. And the guys are going to be wearing jewelry that's provided from the Diamond Information Center outside of New York. So we're going to be all spiffed up. It is black tie optional. So we want everybody to come out and just have a good time. And the charity is Cubs Wise for Family Rescue. Family Rescue is a shelter for battered women and their children. And one more time, the date and the telephone number. The date is Friday, June 23rd, and the number is 375-1918. Okay, good to see you. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. We'll look forward to the evening on the 23rd of June. Meanwhile, Tom Brunanski at the plate, one strike the count. The booth hasn't looked this good in a long time, I'm telling you. Not to take anything away from you, Steve. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but forget about Pat Sajak. Is Vanna White going to be there? Yeah, that's right. No offense, Pat. A strike the count. There's a high fly ball back into left. Webster is there to make the catch. So Pendleton retreats to first. Tom Dreesen is also, I think, supposed to be there as part of the evening's festivities, along with Pat Sajak. I heard Tom the other night on the Larry King show. He was extolling the virtues of the Chicago Cubs and his youth in the Harvey area. He said he wanted to promote a couple projects he's got going and all the calls were about the Cubs. <laughs> oh, Kendo with a line drive base hit in the left. Webster up with the ball. Pendleton stopping at second. Boy, you can't say enough good things about Jose Okendo regardless of whether you're rooting for the Cubs or the Cardinals or whomever Okendo always the first guy at the ballpark he's really worked hard to make himself into a bona fide major league player you've got to like him what I like about him Dwayne was he was saying that he knows that Ozzie Smith is a shortstop here and he also knows that his best position is shortstop but he wasn't going to go and ask for a trade he got a lot of play as a backup to Ozzie Smith and as a utility man and now of course he's moved in every day at second base and we saw earlier in the ball game when he turned two on a very difficult play that he can play anywhere in that infield and do it effectively. Tony Pena the hitter. Maddox found himself in trouble after walking Pena to open the third inning. Let's pause here for station identification. You are watching Cubs baseball on WGN, Chicago's very own Channel 9. Now Pena up there. The walk to him in the third was only the third non-intentional pass he has drawn this year. He takes a strike. He grounded into a double play yesterday. Bouncing the ball up the middle, which is where he usually likes to go. He's grounded into eight double plays this year, which puts him second on the club in that dubious department, right behind Terry Pendleton, who has nine. Ground ball foul. Chop past Rich Hacker, the third base coach. Two strikes the count. There's Pendleton. He opened with a single. After Bernanski hit the fly ball to short left, Okendo single in the left. You know, Dwayne, one of the reasons the Cardinals are a tough team to pitch against is that they've got a lot of contact hitters who don't try to overswing and just try to make some contact the other way. You face Ozzie Smith or Okendo to a certain extent, Coleman and Pendleton, and these guys are just trying to get the bat on the ball. And if they're finding the holes with their speed, they become a very difficult team to defend against. Oh, to the count on Pena. Low outside a ball and two strikes. That's one thing the Cardinals have not been able to do in the early part of the season series between the Cubs and the Cardinals. Cubs have won four of the first six games played and coming into this one the Cardinals had stolen only two bases against the Cubs until Thompson swiped second and went to third on the air in the third inning. A line drive base hit into left. Pendleton is on his way to the plate. The throw will be cut off, and they have a man hung up between second and third. 
Ramos chases Okendo back and gets the tag on him. Pendleton scores and Pena moves into second. So a base hit and a run batted in for Pena, his 13th RBI of the year. And Okendo caught between second and third. Score it. Webster, Law to Ramos, seven, five to six and out. Mitch Webster did it right on this play. He knew that he had very little shot to get Pendleton, so he hits the cutoff man. In this case, Vance Law throws a strike to Law, and then Law has the option. If he hears the catcher yell, let it go, then they have a shot, and he does. But I'm sure that Roni yelled, cut it, and they cut down a base runner. But Maddox having some problems here in the fourth. He's been touched for three hits and another run. Now they have Pena at second. Here's McGrain. The pitch is low and outside for a ball. McGrain sacrificed his first time. And the way he's throwing the ball, every run is a crucial run here. That ball in on him, broke his bat, and into the Cardinal dugout it goes. The count is one and one. You talk about a ball coming in on a hitter. And I'm sure McGrain is feeling that broken bat. Take a look Looks at like Okendo. Jose Okendo. Being yeah, might be. there by the Cardinal trainer, Gene Gieselman. Might have been shaken up when he hit the dirt trying to avoid the tag of Vance Law. Jerome Walton's coming off the disabled list tomorrow, Dwayne. And if you had a choice, I'd have to think that Doug DeCenzo would be going down to the minor leagues. A natural situation, you demote a center fielder and promote another center fielder. That way you don't have to worry about the other positions or guys hitting off the bench. The pitch is down. So we now go to two balls and a strike. There's Pena, the runner. McGrain swings and misses. So we go to 2 2. Will Walton went 3 for 4 in Iowa's victory over Omaha last night, 6 to 5. He's got 6 out of 18 in his rehab assignment at Iowa. 2 2 the cat. And a bouncer foul down the left side. You know, Doug Desenzo has done such a good job defensively, but the Cubs do need a leadoff man. Today, Desenzo is in the eighth spot with Webster on top, but Webster's not the ideal leadoff man. And there you see Doug, who's on base percentage, is barely over 200 at 202. 2 2, the count on McGrain. High popper on the right side, McClendon. Shielding his eyes in foul territory makes the catch to retire the side. Cardinals score a run on three hits and leave one. Bottom of the fourth coming, three nothing, St. Louis. They're given the opportunity to be released from prison if they'll agree to assassinate an important figure. Gene Hackman and Candace Bergen star in the Domino Principle tonight at seven on Chicago's very own Channel Nine. Cubs are down by three. Three nothing. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Another great house. Beautiful day. A little on the cool side with the wind blowing it off the lake. But the sun is out. Clear skies. Vance Law takes the first pitch off the plate. Ball one. Sound like Tom Skilling. <laughs> I'm not going to make any predictions <laughs> though. The pitch is low. I'm going to go out on the line and tell you it's not going to rain during the game today. <laughs> There's not a cloud anywhere in sight. Two nothing to count on Law. Ground ball sharply hit but picked by Pendleton at third and the throw to first in time. One gone. That's why they pay Tom all that big money to correctly predict the weather. There we go. That's about as calm as you're going to see it. Clear blue. Beautiful day. For Irv Siegel of Lorne Buick was at the game today. Larry Markward of Markward Buick and Ed Murphy of Ed Murphy Buick all on hand. Ryan Sandberg back in the starting lineup after missing a couple starts takes ball one. 
Ryan did enter the game as a pinch runner yesterday. Another one to third. This one foul. So the count will be a ball and a strike. The Michael Jordan McDonald's Charity Golf Classic, the world's largest celebrity golf tournament, will take place Wednesday, July 5th at Coghill Country Club in Lamont. Chicago's very own Greg Maddox, Ernie Banks, Gary Sarge Matthews, and others will participate in the event benefiting Ronald McDonald Children's Charities. For more tournament information, call 312-751-2121. A ball and a strike. Check swing and a foul ball. McGrain last year led the National League and earned run average, made 24 starts. This year, three and five with a 436 ERA. Although he's pitched very well since coming off the disabled list, his earned run average since returning to action, 174. He's doing three with a couple no decisions in that stretch. And he strikes out Sandberg for the second time in a row. Got him swinging again. Looks to me, Dwayne, like he's throwing a lot harder than he threw in St. Louis. That fastball is popping today, and McGrain's not known as a fireballer. But I would say that fastball's got to be up around 90 miles an hour this afternoon. And if a guy looks fast during the daylight, usually he'll look a lot faster at night. But here's McClendon. Lloyd has the Cub hit. A single into right to open the second. He takes a strike. Well, he has not a worry in the world, does he? This one is inside. The count is one and one. He is used to the urban life. He can sleep anywhere. He's dreaming of concession stands all around Wrigley Field. This one foul. One and two, the count. Well, McClendon has done everything the Cubs have asked of him and more. Five home runs since coming up from Iowa. The count goes to 2 2. Two good young pitchers. McGrain just 24. Maddox 23 hooked up today. Now we have a full count on Lloyd McClendon. I guess the only concern the Cardinals have over McGrain, nothing to do with his ability, more with durability, because he's had some injuries in each of the first three years he spent with the Cardinals. He has spent time on the shelf. And a liner in the center. That ball will drop for a base hit. Thompson had to stop and reach back to make the pickup. Two hits for the Cubs, and McClendon has them both. And going all the way to 3 2 made a little difference there. Well, he guessed fastball. He got it. And that ball was hit so hard that it actually took an abrupt right turn on Thompson and almost got by him. So it's another big Mac attack with his batting average up to 3 8 9. And here is Darren Jackson. Jackson jumped on the first pitch, hit the ball well his first time, but into the wind. And the center fielder, Mill Thompson, caught it to pitch down ball one. If you're going to take one out in left field today, you're going to have to pull it to left or left center, and you're going to have to hit a line drive. Darren's strong enough to do that, but he's going to have to get a fastball on the inner half. One nothing to count. Down and in. Nice reception by Pena. Come up with that pitch. Mike Rourke's been working with Tony Pena. Rourke, the pitching coach, but he also was a major league catcher. Pena got in a habit of just stabbing at things with his glove, and they want Tony to move his legs and shift his weight. And they feel this year is a renaissance year defensively for a man who's been around a long time, Tony Pena. McGrain comes inside off the plate again. And the count to Darren is three and oh. The Cubs still trying to get a man as far as third base in this series. There's a strike. Maddox 
was at second base after the walk and a wild pitch in the third and yesterday Ramos after being hit by a pitch moved to second when Scott Sanderson was walked and that's been it. And a bouncer foul down the third base side. 3 2 now the count to Darren Jackson. The Cubs shut out yesterday one to nothing a combination effort by Jose De Leon Ken Daly and Todd Worrell. Now the 3 2 and a fly ball into center that's going to stay up for Thompson who makes the catch and the Cubs are out in the fourth no runs one hit with a man left through four the score three nothing St. Louis moves into the fifth inning the Cardinals leading the Cubs three to nothing this is the top of the batting order Vince Coleman stepping in. Coleman takes a strike. Maddox taking something off to start this sequence of pitches to the Cardinal leadoff man. Fits him to a tee. Taylor said, "Try it. You'll like it." The pitch high. <laughs> one ball, one strike. And in the shadows here, in the shade, it might help to keep him a little warmer than he would otherwise be. There's ball two. Two and one. Maddox riding a four game win streak with victories over the Reds, Astros, Braves, and Mets. He beat the Mets 15 to 3 his last time out. The count on Coleman goes to 2 2. Maddox had a no decision against the Cardinals. Back in April here at Wrigley Field in a 5-4 Cub victory. He pitched six innings plus in that ball game. Gave up four runs and 11 hits. Three runs so far in this one. Foul down the left side. Out of play. Count holding at 2-2 on Coleman. The Cardinals are six games into an eight-game road trip, and the Cubs are six games into an eight-game homestand. And then the Cubs go on the road for a nine-game, three-city road trip. And it doesn't get any easier for the Cubs as they go to New York, Montreal, and then finish up with Pittsburgh. As you see, Johnny Lewis talking with Terry Pendleton. Down and in all the way back to the bottom of the stands and the count is full here on Coleman Maddox lost his footing after making that pitch. Take a look at Greg Maddox trying to force this ball throw it a little bit harder than he was capable of and he looks a lot like Nelson Bryles used to look for the Pittsburgh Pirates and St. Louis Cardinals. Full count. A tap towards short, charged by Ramos. The throw in time. Nice play by Domingo Ramos with Coleman going down the line. Same play as the first inning with Coleman chopping the ball to shortstop. Ramos has got to play a little closer with Coleman going down the line, and he gets it there a half stead ahead of Vince. Good effort by Ramos, who's been spectacular at shortstop for the Cubs. He's just part of a great Cub bench that has certainly contributed in the absence of so many of the regulars. Milt Thompson lifts this one down the left field side. Foul ball and out of play. Mitch Webster running out of room. Strike one. The Cub bench has been such a big part of the success the Cubs have had so far this year. We hear so much about the great pitching the Cubs have had and the aggressive play. Or the bench has been something else. Foul ball out of play. Two strikes the count on Milt Thompson. Comes down three to nothing. They have been out hit five to two. Another one for Domingo Ramos to McClendon. Thompson is out short to first. So a couple of ground balls in the fifth. 
And it brings up Ozzy Smith. That's when we see Maddox be so effective when he can get the ball down, sink it, and get the ground balls. When he's gotten hurt today, Dwayne, he's run that count out to either two and two or three and two. And you have a lot of hitters guessing fastball then. They're getting it. And that's when he's fallen on some hard times. Another ground ball for Ramos. He's been busy. Nice scoop and the throw on the move. Takes care of Ozzie Smith and the Cardinals. Three up, three down. Bottom of the fifth inning coming. Three nothing St. Louis. He moves into the bottom of the fifth. Three nothing St. Louis. Arnie, is this where we do the Black Sunday uh, promo? That's got to be coming up on WGN one of these days. We'll use this footage. Here's Domingo Ramos. He was very busy in the top half of the inning. Takes a strike here to open the bottom of the fifth. He handled ground balls by Coleman Thompson and Smith and made a very good play on the ball hit by Ozzie Smith to end the fifth. One ball one strike. We've seen some very good infield play today out of the St. Louis infield and Domingo Ramos at shortstop. Highway robbery by Jose Akendo on Ramos in the second inning. A strike over the inside edge. The count is a ball and two strikes. Ramos, 0 for 1, victimized by Okendo in the second inning. Roller foul. So the count holding at a ball and two strikes. Cubs still looking for their first run in this series. Shut out yesterday. The Cubs have been shut out only once this year in a complete game shutout effort. Yesterday, a combo with De Leon, Daly, and Worrell teaming up. The pitch is high 2 2. The only pitcher to go the distance and shut out the Cubs was Tim Belcher of the Dodgers here at Wrigley Field on April the 25th. He shut him out 4 0 on five hits. Foul out of play. A quick check around the league shows Dwayne that Kevin Mitchell has 23 home runs. He's leading by nine in that department. Daryl Strawberry with 14. Mitchell has knocked in 62 runs this year and he leads by 18 over Will Clark. Any chance of him making the All Star game, you think? Well, he might be the All Star game. A roller foul, still 2 2. Most amazing thing about his game the other day, they walked him three times and the only time that Cincinnati pitched to him, he hit a home run. <laughs> two to the count on Ramos and a one hopper to second Okendo grabs it goes to Guerrero for the out one guard we had a shot a moment ago of Whitey Herzog the Cardinal manager who's in his 10th year managing matter of fact he had a, an anniversary of sorts yesterday. He became the Cardinal manager on June the 9th, 1980, when he succeeded Ken Boyer in that job. He just recently signed an extension, a couple more years. Here's Rick Rona bouncing one up the middle. Ozzie Smith is there, and the throw is in time. So Rona has seen two pitches today and is 0 for 2. An out pitcher first in the third. Goes out short to first here in the fifth inning. We've seen some great shortstop play, and that time Ozzie Smith showed you that you can go away from the play and still make a pinpoint throw. You know, I got a kick out of the article by Barry Larkin complaining that although he's leading the league in hitting at 357, nobody knows who he is in Cincinnati. Can't get any endorsements. Everybody talks about Eric Davis or Chris Sabo. Larkin feels underappreciated, but he'll be big at the bank in a couple of years. Oh, you better believe it. There's Desenzo chopping one up the middle, and this time it's Okendo who goes back to Guerrero. Three up, three down. The Cubs out on the fifth through five. The score, three nothing. St. Louis. St. Louis Cardinals leading the Cubs. Game two of a four-game series. Paul Kilgus and Ken Hill will work tomorrow's game. Then the Cubs and the Cardinals here through Monday, and then the Cubs hit the road for that nine game trip. Pedro Guerrero opens the sixth inning, and the first pitch is a strike on the inside part. Guerrero officially 0 for 2, did reach on an error his first time. That's a very good place to stay on Guerrero. 
But Maddox hopes that Pedro doesn't guess inside and open up quickly. He can hit that ball hard to left field. He's off the plate inside this time. It's one and one. The Cubs lead the East by two over Montreal, three and a half on the Mets, four up on St. Louis. One one to count. Yeah, the standings in the National League's Eastern Division. Love to see that blue flag up on top. Two one the count. Strike to even the count at two two. On deck, Terry Pendleton, then Tom Brunanski. Outfield shaded around toward left center for Guerrero, who's one of the players strong enough to hit the ball through the wind today. Full count on Pedro Guerrero. Maddox has walked one and has struck out three. It's nice to have something other than the basic fastball when you go 3 2 to Guerrero, and there's a foul ball the other way out of play. The fact that he spreads out in his stance and has such quick hands means that he can hit breaking balls. And Dwayne, when you talk about an on base percentage, that Guerrero always has every year and his ability to hit with runners in scoring position. That's a man who can handle a breaking ball and Pedro for a right hander against a right handers curveball probably handles it as well as anybody in the league. One of the reasons he's been so effective with men in scoring position this one up and in for ball four. So Guerrero draws a walk to open the sixth. And it brings along the Cardinal third baseman Terry Pendleton. Pendleton one of two he's singled and then scored in the fourth inning. Maddox to the plate and it's wide a ball no strikes Los Angeles batting in the bottom of the eighth inning. Trailing Cincinnati five to nothing. The Giants have a one nothing lead at home over the Padres. San Diego batting in the top of the fifth. Way wide. Two and nothing. Over in the American League, the Tigers knocked off Toronto eleven to eight. And the Red Sox and the Yankees are tied two two in the bottom of the third at Yankee Stadium. Here Maddox trying to hold the Cardinals at three. And he misses wide again to Pendleton. He's behind three and oh on the count. Pat Perry gets up and starts to throw in the Cubs bullpen. And Rick Rona goes out to the mound to talk with Maddox. Rona's mother was here the other night when he bunted home. The winning run against the Mets on the squeeze play he said she had tears in her eyes. She had a chance to see her son win the ball game. Now the 3 0. -oh, there's a strike and it's 3 and 1. And you wonder in this situation if Guerrero, who doesn't run very well and hasn't tried to steal a base this year, will go to try to stay out of a double play. Remember, Pendleton is grounded into nine of them and he leads the club. Throw to first. Guerrero back in. Pedro has some sliding problems though. Generally when he hits the dirt he winds up hurting something and they're always concerned about that with him. Here's the pitch and it's high for ball four. So two walks to open the sixth inning unofficially from the Belmont easy go or the winner Sunday silence second. Those are the unofficial results at the Belmont. Easy gore and Sunday silence. One, two. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Tom Brunanski will bat for St. Louis. Brunanski is streak hitter. He's at 300 on this road trip for the Cardinals. 0 for 2 in this game.
And the pitch is high, ball one. Cardinals scored two runs in the third inning, one unearned, picked up another run in the fourth. This one fouled behind Rich Hacker. Maddox hurt in the third when he issued a leadoff walk to Tony Pena, and he's flirting with more danger here in the sixth inning, walking the first two men, Pedro Guerrero and Terry Pendleton. Now dealing with Tom Brunanski. Pickoff play at second, but Guerrero is back in. Sandberg breaking to the bag. Okendo follows Brunanski in the Cardinal lineup. Doug. Doug DeCenzo trying to take advantage of the wind is not playing Bernanski overly deep in center field. And that's how it looks zooming in from a high scoreboard camera. Now the count is one and two. Bernanski with seven home runs for the year. 34 runs batted in. Guerrero walk, so did Pendleton. Maddox trying to get out of trouble. He's got to get the first out. Low and away, blocked by Rona. So the count is 2 2. Maddox just 23 years old with a four game winning streak. He has averaged almost eight innings in each of his last five starts, although he did go just five innings against the Mets in the 15 to 3 victory. And if you back it up deeper than that over his last nine starts, his earned run average has been 235, 309 overall. Been touched for two earned runs so far in this game. He misses way wide and down. So a full count on Brunanski. Maddox having big problems in the sixth inning. Don Zimmer knows he can't afford to let the Cardinals get any further ahead than they are right now with Joe McGrain in complete control, limiting the Cubs to just two hits. Full count to Brunanski. Ground ball foul outside of third. Down toward the Cub bullpen where Steve Wilson is handling the job of protector down there while Pat Perry loosens. You can tell he's got a lot of hockey in his past. He knocked that one down like a goalie. There's Perry in the Cubs bullpen. Full count. And he got him. Strike three call. And Brunanski will put up an argument with Steve Ripley. Brunanski thought he'd drawn the walk. And he's called out on strikes. Fourth strikeout for Maddox. And it's a big one on 3 2. Brunanski caught looking. This one might have kept Greg Maddox in the ball game. Brunanski gave up on that ball. It looked like it might have caught the inside corner. Steve Ripley thought it was good enough. A little bit of a delayed call, and Bernanski very hot. Rona sets up. Not a bad pitch. Close enough. Rona brings it back in to give Ripley a better look at it. Close enough to have the Cubs squawking if it doesn't go as a strike. Bernanski doing the squawking after being called out on strikes. One gone. And here is Jose Okendo. Okendo, one of two, a single as last time up. And Maddox starts him with a strike. Okendo against the Cubs this year, batting 250 coming into this game. Jose's grounded into seven double plays, and you wouldn't think that for a man who hits from the left side and runs pretty well. 
It bounces it foul. Two strikes. He is, in terms of his approach to hitting as a left handed batter, his stance, a duplicate of Rod Carew. He crouches, opens that right foot. Two strikes the count. And a liner out of the reach of Ramos. Webster up with the ball. Guerrero will stop at third, and that single loads the bases. Guerrero third, Pendleton at second, and Okendo with his second hit of the day aboard. They're loaded for Tony Pena. Take a look at Rick Rona and where he wants the ball. It's a perfect pitch. Rona set up outside, but sometimes even perfect pitches get hit. This one might have been a little lower as far as Greg Maddox was concerned. And what happens when a sinker baller loses the sink on that fastball, all those ground balls that he got earlier in the game start turning into line drives. And that's what happened to Maddox in the later part of this game. Here's Pena with a walk and a single. He scored after opening the third inning with a walk. Single home run in the fourth. We're now in the sixth. And the pitch is outside. Ball one. Maddox in a big spot. The number eight hitter, Pena. High drive back into left center. Well tagged. Asenzo back on the track. Runs into the wall. It's off the wall. Guerrero scores. Pendleton is scoring. They're going to stop Okendo. The throw hops away from Rona. Into second goes Pena with a double off the wall. And two runs batted in. And it's five to nothing, St. Louis. Ninth double of the year for Tony Pena. RBI is 14 and 15, and he crushes this ball. Maddox gets the ball up, and that's what's been happening to that sinker. And when you get it up, the guy hits it hard. Normally, this would have been a grand slam with the wind knocking the ball down at 17 miles an hour. It's good for two bases and no chance to get Pendleton, and that's going to be it for Maddox. Don Zimmer goes to the mound to get the Cub right hander. Pat Perry is going to get the call. So the Cardinals have two runs home with two men in scoring position and we'll be back with more after this. The Cubs forced to have the infield in down five to nothing in the sixth. There's the story on McGrain for the year at the plate three sacrifices overall one out of twenty three. He picked up his third sacrifice of the year in the third inning today. Okendo at third, Pena at second. And the pitch is a strike. Joe McGrain, the Cardinal pitcher. Center that's going to fall in for a base hit. Okendo scores. Pena will stop. Desenzo's throw goes through, and McGrain picks up only his second hit of the year and singles home the third run of the inning. It's six to nothing, St. Louis. With the infield drawn in, everybody likes to hit, including a pitcher. Normally, Ryan Sandberg has this one right in his hip pocket. But the fact that he's drawn in means there's a lot of room to bloop the ball in. Pena held at third. And Vince Coleman, the top of the order, steps in. Still only one out now with minute first and third. Coleman, nothing out of three. Eight Cardinal hits. A popper down the right side. Jackson in a hurry. Foul ball. Strike one. The Cardinals scored two runs in the third. Another run in the fourth. And they have a big inning here in the sixth inning. They've scored three times. 
Now Pena at third and McGrain at first. Herzog seemingly unaffected by his good fortune today. Wave and a miss by Coleman. Two strikes. So far, all the runs charged to Maddox. A ball, two strikes. Don Zimmer said something interesting before the game. He was talking about his ball club and how they could stay in contention. And he said, I know about the hitting and the defense. He said, but we've got to get the solid pitching. And if we can get that same pitching we've got in the first third of the year and carry it through, we can be in contention all the way. And that's the big question mark. Coleman reaches out and pops it up in foul territory. McClendon will make the catch for the out. Two gone in the sixth. So again, Perry moving that ball down and away from Coleman, batting right handed, got him to reach for it. Vince Coleman really expanded his strike zone here. It looked like a screwball by Pat Perry. Coleman trying to protect and watch the pitch he swung at. Well out of the strike zone. You know, Dwayne, it's one thing to have Dwight Smith and McClendon producing every day with Wilkerson occasionally, but this club really needs Mark Grace, Andre Dawson, and Jerome Walton back in the lineup as quickly as possible. Here's Thompson taking it down and away, ball one. Yeah, that's right. It's one thing to win for a stretch as the Cubs have, utilizing the bench. But realistically, you've got to have those frontline players in there to do it over the long haul. One ball, one strike. So what you do, you count your blessings that the bench has come through the way it has, knowing that stretch out over a long period, it'd be unrealistic to expect it to continue that way. And you try to get your regulars back in as quickly as possible. Two and one. It's almost like basketball in the fact that Dwayne when you outside of the Detroit Pistons when you put in your bench you expect them to just tread some water keep you where you're at till the regulars come back. The Cubs have had the enviable position of having their bench put some daylight between themselves and the rest of the East. But you can't expect that to continue over the long haul. There's a strike at the knees. So the count is square here to Milt Thompson 2 2. Jeff Pico loosening up and he continues to get hot in the bullpen for the Cubs. The bullpen silent for St. Louis as Joe McGrain has had it all his way today. Thompson is out on strikes to retire the side, but the Cardinals scored three runs in the inning. They do it on three hits and two walks and leave two. Bottom of the sixth coming with the score St. Louis six and the Cubs nothing. It's nothing as we move into the bottom of the sixth inning. St. Louis leading this one with Steve Stone and Artie Harris. Dwayne Stats with you from Wrigley Field. Pat Perry will be lifted. Curtis Wilkerson will hit for him. So Perry came on, gave up a hit, picked up a strikeout, and the two thirds he worked. Wilkerson has been somewhat short of spectacular but not too much short of spectacular as a pinch hitter six for eleven this year hitting 242 overall with a home run and five RBIs. The Cubs have to get something going as they're running out of time against Joe McGrain. Cub pinch hitters overall batting 343 for the year. Wilkerson chops it foul strike one. Detroit defeated Toronto. 11 to 8 today. Frank Williams, the winner. Jimmy Key, the losing pitcher. Red Sox batting in the fifth inning at Yankee Stadium. They've taken a 7 to 3 lead in that ball game. This one inside. Nick Asaski hit his ninth home run. Came in the second with a man on. It's over in Cincinnati. The Reds have shut out the Dodgers 5 to nothing. Wilkerson shoots it foul. Browning, the winning pitcher, a five hit shutout. He's six and five now. Belcher, the loser, four and five. Giants batting in the bottom of the seventh, holding a one nothing lead on San Diego. Ed Whitson, nine and two, pitching for the Padres. Wilkerson is out on strikes. Got just a little piece of it, and Pena held on for the sixth strikeout 
recorded by McGrain. Garrell started for San Francisco. Gossage out in the seventh inning for the Giants. Everything else in the major leagues tonight. How about your old buddy, the Houston Astros? They're probably the hottest team in all of baseball. And they find themselves in a virtual tie with Cincinnati for the top spot in the West. Now here's Mitch Webster. And the pitch is foul back, strike one. Well, year after year, everyone looks at that Cincinnati ball club, and they finished second four years in a row. So they're getting some competition over in the West. Not only from Houston, but the Giants figure prominently in the Western Division of the National League. Ground ball off the glove of Pendleton, picked up by Alzi Smith. No play, and that's a base hit for Mitch Webster. The third hit for the Cubs today. This one off the glove of Pendleton. Well hit ball by Webster who hits the ball down and in from both sides of the plate. McGrain got the fastball there. Webster hit it hard. One on one out for Vance Law. You know all the races right now are turning out to be very interesting races. Baltimore I'll show you just how interesting things have been. The Orioles have the biggest lead of anybody in any of the divisions. Foul ball. The Orioles holding a four game lead over second place Cleveland in the American League East. And there we are. The Yankees and the Red Sox each five and a half back. Milwaukee, Toronto, and Detroit rounding out the American League East. And this one popped up foul. Pena will chase it back toward the screen. And that ball hit the, screen. the screen. Hit the screen. Nice catch by Tony Pena, but he can't fool Steve Ripley. And the count is two strikes. That ball. Hit the screen on the way down. Pena went all the way back, bumped into the wall, and made the catch, but only after the ball had hit the screen. And he tells Ripley, believe it or not, I caught it. <laughs> Steve says, yeah, you did, but you caught it off the screen. Nice play by Tony. Now he says, do you believe that I caught this on the fly? Watch the smile here. No, Tony, I don't. <laughs> he says, oh, come on. It up again straight back. Pena chasing this one and it's going to be out of play. Pena ready to try to pull that again if the situation warranted. No chance this time. They've got a young man at AAA by the name of Todd Zeal who's probably going to be pushing Tony Pena for a spot. Pena's contract running out. Zeal hitting a lot of home runs. In fact, he hit the ball so well at the end of spring training that they started calling him Easter Zeal. <laughs> Fastball high. One ball, two strikes. I don't think I don't think we have to take this. <laughs> there you go. This is a beautiful day for a lake shot. Yeah. Way to go, Arnie. That's it. That's a nice way to rationalize. <laughs> <laughs> what you're coming up with. High popper down the left field side. Chase Ozzy Smith into foul territory now and drops the ball. He had a glove on it. He had Pendleton right off his right shoulder. And they're going to give Ozzy Smith an error on the ball. He had his glove on it down in the Cub bullpen and could not hold it. Many, it is. many times after a long run, they don't give a man an error. But Ozzy Smith was under this ball for a while. He had a good shot at it. Nobody disturbing him, and he just has the ball carry him off the end of the glove. So Vance Law is still alive. The ninth error of the year charged to Ozzy Smith. McGrain again makes the one two pitch. Law pops it up again. Guerrero in foul territory makes the catch. At least Vance was consistent. He popped up four straight pitches. Two gone in the sixth. Ryan Sandberg will hit against McGrain with Webster still at first. Cubs have left hander Paul Kilgus set to go tomorrow against Ken Hill. 
And then the final game of the series on Monday, Rick Sutcliffe and Scott Terry. Brian takes it down, ball one. The Cubs shut out yesterday, have not scored a run today. We're two outs into the sixth. And a big bouncing ball to short. Smith to second for the force on Webster to retire the side. No runs, one hit, one error. One left through six. Harry's on his way back over with the score. Six. Hello again, everybody, with Steve Stone and Dwayne Stats. Harry Carey back at the ballpark. The Cardinals are leading six to zip. Boy, these Redbirds will look good in the series. They've stopped this cold. There's a look at Jeff Pico, the third Cub pitcher of the day. Pico, 2-0, 281 ERA. And Ozzie Smith will lead off against them. Well, my good friend, Bill Sullivan out in Las Vegas at Bally's celebrating a birthday with his lovely wife Ramona Bill Sullivan I guess he's all at 39 right doesn't look a day older one ball one strike high foul ball out of play let's pause here for station identification you're watching Cubs baseball on WGN Chicago's very own channel nine Ozzie Smith waiting. One ball, two strike. Fouled and out of action. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bill Sullivan. Happy birthday to you. Well, where do you are? That note requested you don't sing. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Thanks for the compliment, <laughs> calling it singing. Pitch a little low. In honor of Billy Sullivan's birthday, they just turned the lights on. Two balls, two strikes. This bunch for you, Bill. Go get it and send me the bill for it. Two balls, two strikes. Foul it out of play. The Cubs haven't scored in two days. One to nothing yesterday, six to nothing so far today. Bouncing ball, tough play. He gets a nice play. Ramos through on Ozzy Smith. There's an instant decision that a shortstop has got to make, whether to come in on the short hop or wait back. And in this play, Ramos did charge, but he waits back just a shade for the big hop and pours it across to get him. Fine effort by Ramos, who knew he had to hurry, and he makes a good throw. One man out. Here's Pedro Guerrero. You know, the oddity of the series, we've always uh, maintained the guy you got to stop if you're going to beat the Cardinals is Vince Coleman. He's 0 for 8. We've stopped him, but the others are beating us. Two balls, no strikes. If you lead off an inning, Harry, with a base hit or a walk, it becomes difficult to stop the Cardinals. They let off the third with a base on balls, let off the six with two bases on balls. All three of them scored. Yeah. There's a drive way back. It might be out here off the wall. Guerrero will hold up at first with a single. Boy, did he hit the tar out of that one. Almost tore a hole into the wall. He hit it so hard. Just about the longest single you'll see. And now Guerrero will leave the ball game in favor of Jim Lindeman. Fine play by Webster. He gets the ball in quickly. And Guerrero, who almost hit the ball out of the ballpark, 
winds up with a solitary base hit. Jim Lindemann will run for Guerrero. One out, one on. There's Mark Grace and Sean Dunstan comparing some notes. Dennis and Nancy Ward with a wedding anniversary here from Rockwell, Iowa. One strike and nothing. Mark Archibald of Rapid City, Illinois, celebrating his 11th birthday here today. One out, one on. A little bit outside. Lance and Barbara Jacobson from Castle Rock, Colorado. There's the man the Cubs have stopped so far. Vince Coleman without a hit in the series. But Milt Thompson, Jose Akendo, and to a certain extent Pedro Guerrero have done some damage. Pitch a little outside. While he was laughing. You can laugh when you're 0 for 8 when your team is winning. Lindemann. Out of this area. And Pendleton fouls it off. Pendleton has scored two runs today. Singleton scored in the fourth. Walked and scored in the sixth. Two balls, two strikes. Big crowd on hand. Strike three call. Pendleton called out on strike. And there's the backdoor slider, the right hander throwing the slider over the outside corner to the left hand hitter. Hitter gives up on it and it snaps over the corner at the last instant. Two men out. And here's Bronanski. The Cardinals will be within three games of the Cubs if they hold on to this lead. The Cubs went into today's game two ahead of Montreal, three and a half ahead of the Mets, four ahead of the Cardinals. There's a high drive. Ramos backing out makes the catch. And that retires the side. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Cardinals leading six to nothing. Come on, let's get off the Schneider. No runs yesterday, no runs today. Here's Lloyd McClendon. He's two out of two. Of the three Cubs hits, he's had two of them. Yesterday, of the three Cub hits, the four Cub hits, Dwight Smith had two of them. You were looking at Todd Warrell and to his right, Frank DePino. Calvin Chiraldi loosening up in the bullpen for the Cubs. 0 oh, and 2 of the count. Ball outside. Mark Zarang, our radio engineer, his brother Paul, Paul Zarang, celebrating a birthday today. One ball, two strike. Struck him out with a curve. McLendon called out on strike. McGrain not only does not have a shutout this year, but he hasn't completed any of his 10 starts. He's also had a one appearance out of the bullpen. So he's looking for complete game number one and he's got a six run lead and everything well in hand so far. Darren Jackson. 0 for two. That's two out if he makes it. Lindemann come up with a low throw. Pendleton to Lindemann. Get 
and on the green was knocked out in the seventh in St. Louis. He allowed six hits, three runs, walked three. But a different story today. He's only walked one man, and that was the pitcher, Greg Maddox. Here's Ramos. Ramos. Ground ball to the shortstop. Ozzy throws them out. One, two, three. At the end of the seventh, still St. Louis six. Who <laughs> likes to have some fun? So every day I make sure I have me some. I root for the team that makes you stand up and say. And I go for the beer that's known as the king. I'm a Cub fan. <laughs> and a good man. I'm a Cub fan. Oh, yeah. And I'm a good man. So come along and join me, everyone. And I'll show you two your ways to have some fun. Hey, let's have some fun. All right. Holy cow. I'm a good man. Oh, yeah. And I'm a good man. I'm a good man. On to the eighth. There's Okendo to lead it off. Birthday greetings to Julie Bear. Her son Roger is one of the members of the ground crew here at Wrigley Field. Okendo, two out of three. Bouncing ball, easy out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has a right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. The biggest crowd of the year is here today, 38,000 to 45. One out, nobody on. Here's Pena. Tony has driven in. Three runs. He's had a perfect day so far. Two out of two. Give well wishes to a Mrs. Lily. Stellato at Illinois Masonic Hospital. He goes pitch a little outside. One ball, two strikes. It's up to Paul Kilgus tomorrow against right hander Ken Hill of the Cardinals. It back. Well, we got Ryan Sandberg back in the lineup today. Tomorrow, Jerome Walton is supposed to come off the disabled list. Pretty soon, Mark Grace. And then finally, Andre Dawson. A high pump fly. Vance Law under it. And he has it. Two gone. Here's McCrane. When he's single driving in a run in the sixth, it was his first run batted in this year, only his second hit in 24 times at bat. One twenty game tomorrow. Lead off man at one o'clock. Likewise Monday afternoon.
They drew 35,000 yesterday. 38,000 today. That's 73 in two games. They might go better the uh, four game uh, aggregate total against the Mets. It's always a great weekend. A lot of Cardinal fans streaming into Chicago. And lots of Cub fans when the Cubs played the Cardinals last weekend. The pitch is outside. Well, it's a battle between the blue and the red. At my restaurant last night, Steve, it was really funny. <laughs> There's a bouncing ball. Foul. Two balls, two strikes. The Giants still lead San Diego one to nothing in the bottom of the eighth. Two out, nobody on. And that retires the side. We go in the bottom of the eighth. Six to nothing, St. Louis. In the bottom of the eighth, Rick Rona will lead it off. Twice he's been retired on the first pitch. In the third, when he tapped to the mound, and in the fifth, when he tapped to Ozzie Smith. Bottom of the eighth, six to nothing, St. Louis. There's a strike call. San Diego batting in the ninth, trailing one to nothing at San Francisco. Oh, and two the count. Boy, the Red Sox are blasting the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Eleven to three in the sixth. Time for another clubhouse meeting for Dallas. Oh, and two. He struck him out. Rona goes down swinging. Tough to choose who's been most effective over the last two days against the Cubs. De Leon completely dominated the Cubs yesterday, and Joe McGrain has been close to unhittable today. Cubs managed four singles yesterday. They've got three singles today. They haven't had an extra base hit in the series. They've only had four base runners. One was erased in a double play. One out, nobody on. There's a the ground ball, sharply hit the Pendleton. Two men out. And Desenzo is 0 for 3. Damon Berryhill now will pinch hit. First time he's had an opportunity to pinch hit this year, hitting 283 overall. He has a home run and 20 RBIs. So the day is done for Jeff Pico, who as the third pitcher of the afternoon, pitched a couple of innings, gave up a hit, and struck out one. Pico worked two scoreless innings. Two out, here's Barry Hill. Founds the pitch back. One strike and nothing. Boy, it's pretty hard to manufacture any runs when the opposing pitchers dominate the game like De Leon and now McGrain today. Two men out, nobody on. 0 and 2 the count. McGrain going for his first complete game and his first shutout. You look at a guy like McGrain today and you wonder how he ever loses. There's a looper in the short right, a base hit. Barry Hill, a pinch hitter, singles to right. Cubs have used two pinch hitters. They're one for two in that department, and that'll improve that 343 pinch hitting average that the Cubs have had this year, which is a radical departure. Just about double what they did last year. So four hits yesterday, four hits today for the Cubs. 
pitch a little bit low. One ball, no strike. Mitch Webster. One out of three. Ball two inside. McGrain has won only three ball games. He's lost five. There's a foul ball in the stand. McGrain with a high earned run average, 4.36. He's allowed only one home run, though. There's a young man with a bat. He's ready to go. Two balls and a strike. Fouls it off again. Well, those rooftops are certainly well populated today. Look at that. Japan across the, the outside of the ballpark. Two balls, two strikes. There's a hit. Mitch Webster singles the center. And the runners on at first and second. Nobody has reached third for the Cubs today. Nobody reached third yesterday. Yeah. And this is the first time the Cubs have had as many as two base runners on in the same inning. And that's going to start the bullpen to work for the Cardinals. Dan Quisenberry up and throwing. The pit. Foul back. On the count. Roger Clemens pitching for the Red Sox at Yankee Stadium. The Red Sox leading 11 to 3. Into the dirt. Boy, that Pena really. Smothers those low pitches. One ball, one strike. The year's biggest crowd is on hand. There's a drive to right field, is curving foul. That would have scored two. But unfortunately for Vance Law, the ball sliced into the seats. One ball, two strikes. Two men out, two men on. Bottom of the eighth. Same two teams here tomorrow and again Monday. McGrain indicates to Pena to go through the routine of signs again. One ball, two strikes. Foul in the back. One and two the count. Cubs are hopeful of evening up the series today, recalling how they handled McGrain in St. Louis. But he's been a bit of better pitcher here, a different pitcher today. One ball, two strikes. He struck him out. Law is called out on strikes, and he argues about it. Two men left on base at the end of eight. St. Louis six, Cubs nothing. The ballpark, Calvin Giraldi will be the fourth Cub pitcher pitching the ninth inning here. Here's Vince Coleman. 0 for 4 today, 0 for 4 yesterday. Yet his team 
about to beat the Cubs the second day in a row. There's a strike call. Calvin on for the 24th time and he usually comes in when the game is on the line. He's got four saves and he's been used as a setup man for Mitch Williams. The Cubs number one in the National League in saves. Pitch a little low ball too. Far Joe McGrain. The nine strikeouts he already has today is a career high for him. There's a fly ball. Webster back. Makes a fine catch. One away. Coleman fly to Webster. Mitch Webster with a smile on his face. And that one was slicing away from him and he went back and made a fine catch. Mills Thompson base hit in the third drove in their first run. <laughs> the way it is now. That's all they needed. Cardinals trying to shut the Cubs out the second day in a row. One out, nobody on. All evened up, a ball and a strike. We're in the ninth. That outside two and two. Followed it again. A lot of the fans have left the ballpark now. A late starting time today, three o'clock. Back to normal time tomorrow and Monday at 120. Lead off man each day at one o'clock. Three balls, two strike. He walked him. Thompson gets a base on ball. There you see the fans outside the ballpark heading for their automobiles or other conveyance, maybe one of those buses. There's a real, there's a Cardinal fan very happy, a little juiced up too. There's the pitch a little bit low. Shirelli. Has walked his first man. Strike call. A ball and a strike. 38,045, the year's biggest turnout. One ball, one strike. A little wide. On Ozzy Smith, who's one out of four with a run batted in. Whoa, past McLendon in the right field. Runners will be at first and third. It's, it's a hit. A hot ground ball to the right of McLendon. That's the first play that Lloyd McClendon could have made that he didn't. It's a tough hop. It bounces over his glove out into right field and the Cardinals threatening once again with Jim Lindemann up who's hitting for the first time. He came on to pinch run for Pedro Guerrero. Lindemann hitting just 125. Used a lot as a pinch hitter. One out of 14 pinch hitting. Strike call. Strike two call. Oh and two. 
We're in the top of the ninth. Dig Paul. He struck him out. Lindemann goes down swinging. Two out now. And here's Terry Pendleton. One out of three has scored two runs with a single and a walk. Should be handled. Vance Law is there and has it. Two men are left on base. We go into the bottom of the ninth and still the Cardinals six, the Cubs nothing. Harry Carey back at Rigby Field, bottom of the ninth coming up. The Cubs trail six to nothing. The Giants beat San Diego one to nothing. The Reds beat the Dodgers five to nothing. And the Cardinals are winning six to nothing. A lot of shutouts. Here's Sandberg to lead it off. 0 for 3. Two balls, no strikes. Three balls, no strikes, and ball three. Somebody stirs in the bullpen, but they're not warming up. Three and one now. Sandberg fanned his first two times, bounce into a force play the next time. There, ground ball to Ozzy. Throws him out. On the way. He's got such quick hands at shortstop. That one took a bad hop right into his body, but he stayed right with it. If you keep your hands down, you can always come up with a hop. That's exactly what Smith did. One man out. Here's Lloyd McLendon. He's got two of the Cubs five hits. And Quisenberry loosening up in the bullpen once again. For the second day in a row, no Cub has reached as far as third base. Bouncing ball foul. Chuck Cotier, the third base coach, will probably change his deodorant. He's been a lonely man in the third base coach's box these two games. One ball, one strike. These two teams will be even over the season's play. Monte, let's see. We swept two there, two here, one two out of three there. So they have. We will have four to their three, right? That's it. Three balls and a strike. Hey, he walked him. Ball four. That's only the second man that McGrain has walked. He's fanned a career high today. The career high being nine strikeouts. Darren Jackson. Bouncing ball left field. Base hit. Let's get off that Schneider as a means of getting ready to beat him tomorrow. It's not as if the Cubs weren't a hot club coming into this series. They had averaged 7.7 runs per game here in June. But the Cardinal pitching staff has come in here and completely shut down the Cubs attack. 
Here's Ramos. Hope for three. Ground ball might be two out at second base, out at first base, and the game is over. And the Cardinals have taken it two games to none lead in the series of four by shutting out the Cubs for the second time in a row. De Leon one to nothing yesterday, and McGrain six to nothing today. We'll be back with the totals in a moment. The sure play of the game happened in the third inning when Mill Thompson batted him the first round of the ball game, and that's all the Cardinals really needed as they went on to blank the Cubs six to nothing. The sure play of the game. All right, you being a pitcher, tell me something. How does a guy like Joe McGrain have such a mediocre record? You see him out there today, and he looked like a world beater. He looked like a Hall of Famer. Great fastball, great curve, good control. What's the difference? Why, well, why is he winning about 10 or 12 by now? Well, this is a quality pitcher for one thing. Last year, he led the National League and earned run average with a 2.18 ERA. And Harry had some physical problems this year. He's got colitis. He's also had a rib cage problem, and he wasn't the same pitcher for a while. When we saw him in St. Louis, he was a good pitcher, but not a great pitcher. But early in the game today, you could tell that he had his fastball ready to go. He threw some good breaking balls. He also was in command. You know, he was ahead in the count most of the day. He yeah. got his curveball over. And any major league pitcher, especially one who can lead the league and earn run average, you know, can put a game like this together. You know, the Cardinals looked so much better in this in the first two games of the series than they did in St. Louis. And basically, there's only one change. Willie McGee was not playing today or yesterday, whereas he was in St. Louis. Certainly a good ball player like Willie McGee. Uh, being uh, out of the lineup could be the reason they played so well. Well, Milt Thompson is playing very well, and the Cardinals seem to play a little better when he's in center field. But one thing that's different now, Harry, when we saw the Cardinals in St. Louis, they weren't moving along the base runners. They'd get a man at second base with less than two outs. They couldn't move him to third. Every opportunity they've had to score a base runner in this series, they've scored him. And yesterday, with two out in the first inning and nothing going, Ozzie Smith gets an opposite field double. Pedro Guerrero doubles to right center and gets the run home. And today they took advantage of some mistakes on the part of the Cubs, and good teams will do that. You know, they told me coming into this that they were a hot club. They weren't lying to me. Well, you know, the uh, Cubs weren't exactly a cold club. They've been playing great. And uh, it seems, though, that now the Cardinal pitching is reversed it because the Cubs didn't get any base runners to play they're inside baseball. They're running baseball. That's the only way that the Cubs score, too, is by moving base runners around. You have to hand it to the Cubs to this point. They've done it with Mears. They've done it with a lot of guys who started the season at Iowa. And, Harry, they got a lot of production out of guys from the bench. But you cannot go through a championship season, especially in the National League East, and play guys who were in AAA when the season started. So Don Zimmer and Jim Fry are going to be very happy men when they're walking wounded, start filtering back into the lineup. And uh, hopefully that won't be too long now. Uh, we'll have Jerome Walton back tomorrow. Uh, that'll be a good sign. I imagine uh, they can uh, well use his bat and his base running, not to take anything away from Desenzo, who really did a terrific job filling in. Jerome Walton's on base percentage was over 300, and that sets the table for your offense. Even though Doug Desenzo did catch everything in center field, and there's no doubt here, he had got no qualms with his defense. His on-base percentage was just around 200, which means that one out of every five times or once a game he was getting on base, either by a base hit and a walk. That's really not good enough at the major league level to set the table for your offense. I think they'll be happy to have Walton back because I think he can play center field just as good as Desenzo, and I think he'll hit a little bit more. You know, uh, the more you think about it, the more you realize that uh, this National League Eastern Division is going to be wide open for a long, long time. Everybody's had injuries so far, and the only team that has remained injury-free is the Montreal Expos, and that's a team, Harry, especially with the addition of Mark Langston, that you've got to watch. You know, they're right behind the Cubs in the standings right now. Again, they've had their four premier players, Andres Galarraga, Hubie Brooks, Tim Wallach, and Tim Raines, all healthy. And when you couple that with Dennis Martinez and Pasquale Perez, who seems to be on the right track right now, add Mark Langston to Kevin Gross, a couple of additions to that pitching staff, you'd have to say that they were going to be right there at the end. 
on uh, Don Zimmer's radio show today, I told Zim, I said, the one team I keep looking over my shoulder at and worrying about, see what they did the night before, is Montreal. Because uh, like you, they've impressed me now. They have pitching, they have defense, they have speed, and uh, uh, that's a combination that's is about all you really need to win. And we've seen the Cardinals come into this series and realize that they're going to be a contender. And the one team that people don't talk about due to their injuries and the fact that they haven't put it together yet is the New York Mets, the team that everybody conceded the division to when the season started. They're going to be there too, Harry. It's going to be a dogfight the rest of the way, and hopefully the Cubs can continue getting the same pitching they've gotten the first third of the season. I tell you one thing about the Mets, though. The injuries to the older stars like Hernandez and Carter, I think you may affect them for a long period of time, and maybe for all time. This might be their, uh, their last hurrah, and uh, I think they maybe have more to worry about than the team like Montreal. I think the New York Mets, with a strong pitching staff and they're going to be one two in the National League all year long have got to get Greg Jeffries ready to go if he can start playing and start hitting the baseball like they know he can after his short season last year and if they can put him in the number two spot I think the New York Mets offense will start to click I didn't think we saw a good New York team when they played us here I think we're going to see a very good New York team when we play them there. Well, the one man that the uh, Chicago Cubs have to get in the blind of two, and the sooner the better, that's the big guy, Andre Dawson. You cannot possibly be as good a team without him as you are with him. And the sooner he comes to the back into the starting lineup, the better off the Cubs are going to be, and the better their chances of prevailing. And we also have to get Mark Grace back in the lineup because he gives you balance. You've got some guys who hit the ball very well from the right side. The Cubs now 15 and 5 against left-handed starters. But Mark Grace from the left side against right-handed starters is a man that you have got to have in the lineup every day. You know, Andy just whispered a uh, sage observation. He says maybe the most valuable uh, member of the Cardinals was Frank DePino because Mark Grace hurt, <laughs> hurt his shoulder in that fight and hasn't played since. And Grace is another guy that could have used in their lineup. Well, hopefully Mark Grace will think twice about going to the mound again, Harry, because <laughs> you can see what happens. Suddenly the team riding high, Mark Grace hitting in the three teens, and now he's on the shelf for what looks like it could be 10 days to two weeks, and that hurts the ball club. So sometimes you have to uh, take your emotions, put them in your pocket, save it for another day, and maybe save yourself an injury. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to be here. <laughs> here are the totals on the ball game. For the victorious St. Louis Cardinals, six runs, ten hits, one air. Joe McGrain, the winner, his first complete game of the year, his first shutout of the year, and his all-time career high in strikeouts in the major leagues nine. For the Chicago Cubs, no runs, six hits, two errors. Greg Maddox, the loser, he now has won five and lost six. With Steve Stone and Dwayne Stats, Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field reminding you, third game of the series tomorrow, Paul Kilgus goes against Ken Hill, and I hope you'll be here then. See you all later. So long, everybody. Our next televised game on Channel 9 will be between the Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals tomorrow afternoon. Our telecast begins with the leadoff man at 1 o'clock. Our executive producer director has been Arnie Harris. Our assistant director, Joe Carneal. St. Louis Cardinals six, the Chicago Cubs nothing's a final score.
Harry Carey from Wrigley Field. So long, everybody. <laughs>